Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today, as I shoot this video, it's October 30th, 2019, and the 2019 Go to the Land Festival was just held recently here in Texas, in Temple, this past weekend. I did attend, and it was nice to get to see all the other YouTube hosts and uh, stroll the grounds and look at all the vintage machinery. Justin from Go to the Land and his crew did an outstanding job, so thank you guys, and thank you to everyone that had the time and patience to wait to get to speak with me and shake my hand. It was really awesome to be received very well like that and thank you all very much. Had some of the best homemade ice cream I've ever had so outstanding. Got a couple of new stickers this week from Craig's Workshop in Tasmania. Little island southern coast of Australia, other side of the world. Very cool. New channel. Go check his material out. And Raptor Machine Tool checked in as well. It's nice to have new stickers on the board. Today's demonstration, other than the focus you guys are going to mention, Neat Nick up here, Stan Zinkowski from RZ Industrial stopped in with Ray Cornelia and toured my facility and he said it looks more like an operating room than a machine shop. So he put Neat Nick on my board. I think I'm going to keep it. Anyway, the demonstration today or the topic today is a bandsaw. It's a simple machine. You turn it on, you use it, you turn it off, right? It's just like a belt sander, grinder, you don't really give it much thought, you just assume that it's going to work when you hit the switch. Well, if you own one, if you're buying one, if you're setting one up, you really should know all the little nuances of the guides and the rollers and how things work and why so that it produces a straight cut. Band saw blades, like most saw blades, have a curve to it. The teeth are offset so that the cut it produces is wider than the actual blade. Simple. If one side of the blade is wiped out for whatever reason. When you try to cut straight with it, the blade's going to start to twist, the cut's going to go off to the side, and you're going to find yourself twisting the board, pushing it through just to cut on a straight line. Well, that just tells you that one side of the blade is shot. Still cuts because it's sharp and it has the other side, but that's why it does that. And this is what the blade would look like looking at it from the top. If you were coming around the rollers and looking down, each tooth every other tooth, every third tooth, whatever, is going to be set. The blade that you select should engage at least two teeth into the material at all times. Thus, you do not want to cut material on a bandsaw that fits in between the teeth. It is going to strip those teeth off and shoot them everywhere and it's going to feel like bee stings because those teeth are hot when they break off and then the blade is shot, okay? Don't do this, make sure that you have two teeth. That means coarse tooth for a thick material is fine, coarse tooth for a soft material is fine, but if you've got a skinny material, you're gonna need a blade with a lot of teeth. Keep that in mind, it's a good rule of thumb. When you set your guides on your machine, and it's not necessarily the guides that prompted this demonstration, because I will walk you out and show you my equipment, it's the thrust bearing, but that's next. Guides on a blade. The blade is stabilized side to side with what they call a blade guide. Do all machines, big heavy industrial machine, the guides are not adjustable. So when you buy a different size blade, you're going to have to install different size guides. A hobby machine like a Craftsman bandsaw, but I have one of those as well, I'll show you that one. The guides are adjustable, the whole guide assembly is adjustable and you can use one set of guides for whatever size blades you have. This is the way you want to set it up. Your blade guide should contact your blade on each side of the blade just behind the root of the teeth on the blade. Simple. You want as much support on that blade as you can without compromising the chip evacuation area or encountering the set on the blade. Keep the guides away from the blade set and away from the root of the tooth. That's simple. There's really nothing else to it. You want them right up against the blade, maybe with a piece of paper clearance, a couple of thousandths of an inch clearance. You want to be able to pull the blade towards you and let it go and have it relax back in between the guides. You don't want it to be sticky. Rotate the blade by hand. If it's a new blade, you don't know if the weld 
is thicker than the blade, and if the weld comes around and gets jammed in the guide, well, you're going to find that out pretty quick when you hit that on switch and you get that squeal and it burns the rubbers on your wheels. All right, blade guides covered. Keep it in mind, okay? Thrust bearing. Thrust bearing is the part of the machine that provides resistance on the blade as you apply pressure to the front of the blade. The thrust bearing is usually just that. It's usually a bearing or a rolling mechanism of some sort. It is located ideally right behind the blade. Yet not touching the blade. That's key. It spins. It shouldn't spin if you're not cutting. It should, the blade should track, ideally, just off the thrust bearing surface. Not much. I'm not saying the thickness of the blade itself. I'm talking maybe two sheets of paper, five thou, whatever. But really close to that bearing without touching it. As soon as you engage the material, that blade should hit that thrust bearing and then the bearing should spin. If it's not set that way on your machine, then change it. Now, what's going to happen if it's too far away? You're pressing on your material, all is good. You're coming up to that line that you drew and say, okay, I'm there. And when you stop, the blade is going to relax towards you because it's flexed from the cut that you just made and it's going to walk right over the line without you even moving the part. And you're going to go, well, what the hell's going on? Well, that's what's going on. I will show you the do-all that I have. I will show you the rolling setup on the do-all that I have. And I will show you the rigid setup that the Craftsman offers and show you both ways to do that. Now the reason for this demonstration, which inspired all this technical mumbo jumbo, which you may or may not appreciate, is a technique that I call riding the blade. That's what I call it. It may have another term for it, but that's what I call it. The ability to use a bandsaw blade to trim the edge of a part without burying the blade in the part. You want to be able to control it. So you actually set your piece your wood against the back of the blade this way at an angle and by using the back of the blade as the guide, I'm going to show you this, it's pretty cool, by using the back of the blade as a guide you can keep that blade from going crap, digging into the part going, oh man I didn't want to cut that much, I only wanted to cut pencil line thickness off the edge of that blade now I ruined the, now I ruined the part. We'll ride the back of the blade. I'll show you how that's done. Let's take a walk out to the shop and show you the setups. Okay, guys, like I discussed on the whiteboard demonstration, you can see this is the do-all setup. This is a very rigid setup. The thrust bearing here in the back is not touching the blade. The blade will move back ever so slightly. I am pulling on this blade ever so slightly just to see how far away from that roller it is. So when I lighten up on the pressure just a hair we do have some contact which is the optimum setup. You can see these are hard guides on the side. This is set for a half inch blade and let's move around the side here and take a closer look at how those guides are set. You can see that the kerf of the tooth or the root of the tooth is right at the front surface of the blade, or excuse me, right at the front surface of the guide, which is ideal. This is the best setup that you could possibly hope for. Okay, that is the correct setup for the thrust bearing and the guides. The thrust bearing is not adjustable, it is pressed into a pocket on the bottom of this particular head unit. Craftsman saw is a little bit lighter duty, but it's very versatile. They, they did a good job with the engineering here. The entire guide mechanism is adjustable with a thumb wheel in the back, so this entire head moves forward and backwards, which is nice. And the thrust bearing here, thrust bearing control, brings the wheel in and out. So with this unit, you do not change the rollers or excuse me, you do not change the guides, you just change where they seat. So if all goes well, these are seated 
right behind the blade root. Which they are. Minimal side to side movement on the blade. You can see the gap right here at my thumbnail, right here. We could probably actually dial a little bit more of that out. And the thrust roller in the back is just about touching the blade. It's right there, top and bottom. You can see the blade thrust roller start to move. I have minimal pressure on this blade from behind, which is good. And a little bit of pressure from the front, and you can see it starts to move it. So that is the ideal setup, guys. Absolutely ideal. Top and bottom. And forgive the chips. I just finished using this machine. The guides on a horizontal saw are bearings as well. And nine times out of ten, you can look at the shaft on this bearing and you can see that it's off center. That's because the shaft is eccentric. If you want to adjust uh, how square the blade is, where the blade tracks, or the tension of these wheels, loosen the lock nut, turn the shaft itself, and the blade roller will oscillate this way and you can set the gap to whatever you want to set it to. You can see the thrust bearing just barely showing through in the back. Both sides front and rear. So there are bearings behind this mess in here. Trust me they're in there. And you can see the thrust bearing right there as well. So all these bandsaw blades will have that same three-point contact. This is a three-quarter inch blade because it's three-quarters of an inch this way. And I believe it's an 032 blade that way. This is a half inch blade on the dual. It's half inch front to rear. And on the little craftsman over here, this is the more utilized for ornate woodwork and such. This is a quarter inch blade. Okay, for sake of demonstration, I am going to attempt to saw this chunk of wood without removing that line right there, that's a pencil line. But halfway down, I've got two marks, I'm gonna jump off the line and move to the outside and then come back and continue. Now the ride the blade technique, I'm gonna go back in a second cut and I'm going to remove the high spot, hopefully with the same integrity that the initial cut was made with. So the camera is directly between my eyes and this blade, so bear with me and I hope this goes well. Take a look at how that worked out from a distance. Relatively close to the line, and I think you're seeing more of the bottom than you are from the top. Let's look at that from the top for real. I got a pretty good edge on that. And you're going to go back and you're going to say, wow, that didn't work out very well. How are you going to take care of that without gouging it all up? Well, here's the thought. When you do this, Make contact with the back of the blade. That way you can regulate how deep the side of the blade is going to cut. Now, as with any cut, you want your lower guide or your upper guide mechanism as close to the part as you can, leaving it exposed uh, grossly above the part. Well, it's just not recommended all the time. You can get away with it if you're very aware, but as, an, as a new user, try to keep it nice and tight. It's a lot safer. So let's ride this part along the back of the blade and use the back of the blade as the guide and see if we can shave that off down to the line without cutting the line off.
chairman's got better eyes than I do. Let's get closer. Okay, there you go. That specific technique works really well. If you were to take this board and go directly into this blade and try to get that, you would not be able to achieve the precision that you get by using the back of the blade as the guide. Now don't be fooled by how this looks right here. You're actually looking at the cross section of that part and not an exposed edge. By turning it sideways you can see just how tight that machine cut to that pencil line. And it worked very well. That is a technique I call riding the blade. Try it out. Works really well. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, well I hope you got something out of that. If you're going to walk up to a bandsaw or use or buy a bandsaw, make sure you inspect the guide mechanisms, the roller mechanisms, check the rubbers on the wheels, make sure everything is solid because the last thing you want to do is have that blade come off and get you. I hope you learned something here. I hope you can use something here. Thank you very much for watching. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas.